Hello there. Thanks for attending this session. In this session, we will talk about building the right development environment for Modic. Building the proper development environment will help you uh, check out the new features before they are released, find and fix bugs, build the new features, or write new plugins. So the right development environment is the starting point to make Motic a better software and to develop new features and deliver new bug fixes. Uh, in this tutorial, I will show you how to install this uh, development environment on Windows. This uh, methods like these commands can be shared with other environments with, uh, with slight changes to the commands. Uh, we will be using uh, several tools, including DDEV, which is basically a development environment, Choco, a tool to install several tools that we need uh, to set up the environment, Docker Compose, to have a virtualized image uh, of uh, operating system and reconfigured systems that runs Multic. And we need WSL2, which basically allow us to run Linux within Windows. We will get Ubuntu to run, which is a Linux version on Windows, and we will use Visual Studio Code to write some tests and some codes and then push them to the Motic code base. So before we get started, we need to verify a couple of things. We need to, to make sure that we have Windows 10, one of these versions. We need to have Docker. We need to have Docker Compose and we need to have PowerShell and .NET Framework. I will go th uh, quickly uh, through a couple of checks to verify that we have all the required software. So first of all, I need to check if uh, Windows is the right version. I right click on the start button, then I go to run. Then I type down WinVer to get the version of Windows. As you can see, I have the build 19.042, which is one of the latest versions because I updated Windows recently. So I have one of the latest versions. This is the first step. Then we need to run a tool called PowerShell. This is a very important tool to have. So go to PowerShell and then run it as administrator. You will be asked to give permissions. We need that. We need to make sure that the PowerShell version that we are running is the right version. By running this command, I will share with you this uh, just so you can use these commands as copy and paste exactly like I do. So I have the version 5 and I need the version 2 plus, so I'm, I'm in the right place. I need to verify that I have .NET version 4 plus, so I run this command. If it says uh, it's true, that means I have something more than 4. If it says false, you need to download the, uh, the latest version of .NET on your system. Now it says true, then I am on the right, uh, on the right track. You also need to make sure that you remove any Docker toolbox in case you have it installed. Okay. And then we need to install Chocolati. Chocolati is basically a package manager for Windows, which allows us to install different software using commands. And it will integrate any uh, required dependencies or any required software that uh, we need to run other software. And all we have to do is to run this command. And this command will install Chocolati on our system. It would take a little while. In rare cases, you just have to restart uh, the PowerShell to make it run. Then we need to make to run this command, which basically says uh, uh, that we need to make a new certificate, a new security certificate. Let me go back right. So um, if you see here in any communication that we uh, use on the internet, we have the secured connection. Uh, locally, uh, we cannot have this type of secured connection, but using this tool, the make cert, will allow us to create secure connections within the local host. As you can see, I already installed it, so you have it here. Then we need to run these commands, which is basically uh, tell the system to create a new certificate and then install it on Windows. So any communication that happens uh, will be secure. So you have to run these two commands on, on the PowerShell, on the same exact PowerShell. Now we are done with Chocolati and its installations. Uh, 
we have to install something called WSL, which is basically a Windows subsystem for Linux, which allow us to run Linux inside of Windows, so you don't have to do double boot or switching from system to system. This will allow you to run Windows, uh, uh, to run Linux within Windows. Uh, all you have to do is to run this command, which will allow um, the Microsoft Windows subsystem to run. Um, be careful, when you run this command, you will be prompted to restart your computer. So save any work that you have and close it. Um, once that is done, let me show you how it looks like. So I have done this step before, and I have started my computer. You would say it's, it's running, it's, it's looking a little bit weird, but it's running. So while it runs, we need to go to a specific URL to download Ubuntu, and then we need to do to download another tool, which is the WSL2 Linux kernel. Now we have it installed, everything is correct. We need to download um, something called WSL2 Linux kernel, which, which is basically upgrades WSL to the next version. I have it, I have it already downloaded. So I just have to run the installer. This is the file. You have the URL for it as well in the gist. It's a very simple installer. Just go with the next as usual. And it will install. You're finished. Now we need to make one extra step is to get WSL to use the newly installed version, which is version number two. Now we are almost done. The um, final step in this section is to install Ubuntu. So you have to go to this link. And here you can see that you can download Ubuntu immediately uh, into the Windows Store. I will open the Windows Store. You have a lot of steps to take, but eventually that will pay off because you will have a stable environment so you can test everything without the hassle of managing different versions of PHP or MySQL and to configure a lot of things. This will take care of everything for you. Now I will click on Get. I don't want to sign in. Just get me the uh, system open to. And now it will start downloading Ubuntu. That will take a little while, so I will continue after the installation is done. Now that the, the download is done, we can launch Ubuntu from Windows. Just click on the Launch button. It will start the installation process. It will take a few minutes, then it will ask you for a couple of things. Now the installation is almost done. We will have to create a new user. So I will just call it a very simple name, user, and I will give it a simple password. And as you can see now, we have Ubuntu running inside of Windows and you can run any Windows, uh, any Linux command without any issues. For now, this step is done. We just close this and we close this because we are done with both of them and we continue with our manual for the installation. So now we have Ubuntu installed. Now we have to install Docker Desktop. So I run this command via Choco, again with the PowerShell. This will install Docker. As it says, uh, do you want to run the script? Yes, I want to run the script, everything. The installation will start. It would take some time. So we will continue after the download is done. Now, as you can see, the download has finished and uh, Docker desktop is installed. An extra step that you have to do here before we carry on is that you either need to restart your computer or log out and log in again uh, because Docker will install, uh, will add some users to your, to your Windows and these users will not be activated until you restart your computer or log out. So I will log out and re-log in again uh, for these users to activate and then we will I restarted my computer and now everything uh, is installed as we want. So just go start, then look for Docker Desktop. 
we have to make a small change to its settings. Now Docker is running on the background. This is the interface that manages. We have to go to settings, then go to resources, go to WSL integration, and make sure that this, this one is checked, enable integration with my default WSL distro, and then enable it for Ubuntu, then click apply and restart. This step will take uh, some time. Once we are done, just close this. Now in PowerShell, we have to run this command just to verify that uh, we have the right configuration. Now we have Ubuntu installed, Docker desktop and Docker desktop data, three instances or three, uh, three items, all of them on version number two, then we are on the right track. Now we have to start Ubuntu. Just go to the start menu, then click Ubuntu. Now we have, uh, we are running inside Ubuntu. You just have to run this command, which is echo for car root. And this will show you that we have the right path. It should show you something like this. Make sure it show you something like this. If it doesn't show you something like that, go to the previous steps where uh, we had the certificate creation and make sure it's there. Also, we need to create the Docker PS. We have to check for Docker PS and we can see that Docker is working. We have output, that means Docker is working. Now the PowerShell part is done. Close the power the PowerShell. And let's install Linux Pro inside Ubuntu. Now we are working inside Ubuntu. Linux Pro is a similar to, a tool to Homebrew of Mac, which is a, a way uh, to install the Homebrew, but for, for Linux, Homebrew is basically a tool that allows us to install other software and other stuff that we need to run DDEV, which is the system that we need to run Motic. So I have to run this command and this will start working to install. So basically this will install Homebrew. Homebrew is the tool that we need to install DDEV. Now we are running inside Linux, inside Ubuntu, while we are taking the advantage of Windows. This will take a little while, so we will continue when the installation is done. Now we have Brew installed and ready to be used. We just need to add a couple of commands. This is to add the Brew to the path, so we can call it immediately. Then finally, we have to install the GCC and DDEV by running this command as well. It takes a little while to get everything installed and prepared, but once you are done, you can move forward with everything easily. Now we have DDEV installed and everything is working as expected. You just need to run the final command to update Linux from the inside with the latest packages. Now that we have the dev installed and configured and everything is ready, now it's time to start working with the code. The first step that you need in order to clone the GitHub repo is to configure an SSH key with GitHub. To do this, uh, you either copy your uh, own SSH key and put it inside this Ubuntu, or you can generate a new key. So I will generate a new key here using this command. This will basically create a new key for me. Uh, I will just go with the default values. I will give it a strong password because this is important to have a strong password. Now you have the key. Uh, then we need to take the key and, and put it inside uh, GitHub. So to do this, you need to go to your GitHub, click on your profile, then go to settings. When you go to settings, you will see the screen, go to SSH and GBG keys. Create a new SSH key, call it whatever you want to do, mark on, and now we need the value of the key. You can get the value of the key by going to this path, which is home user, whatever on your computer would be. So it would be cd.ssh, and then you need to have the ID rsa.pub. We will use the cat command, and that will give you the whole key that you need to paste it inside GitHub. So make sure you copy it as is, you paste it inside GitHub. Edit, copy, 
and add SSH key. Once you have it ready, we will be able to clone the code. So uh, to, to verify that your connection is working with GitHub as required, you just have to run this command. And if you see, it will ask you for your bash phrase, the one you just created. It seems that I'm not right. Once you are authenticated, you will see your username here. So now you are ready to start cloning uh, Motic and uh, working on it. Now that we are authenticated with GitHub and we can do whatever we want, uh, we need to go to Motic repo, which is this one, and you need to click on fork. This will basically create a copy of uh, Motic code inside your repo, and you will have a copy under your name, and then we need to clone this one. So you can clone it by running this command, which is git clone. As you can see, I'm using the one under my username. And this command basically means we will create a new folder called code and inside it, there will be the code base. You will be asked for the password. It would take a little while. Now we have to go inside the code. So CD code, we will add something called an upstream, which is basically um, telling get that we want to get some uh, the changes of the upstream which is the original motic so when um, any changes that happen to the original motic we can reflect it into our uh, own repo and we can see what are the differences and we can get the new features by using the upstream commands we will see them in, in action in a little bit so now I will just run this command and if I click on get remote minus V, you can see that we have one under my name and the other one is the original one. Now we have the code base and now we should start the development process. Now we have the code, as you can see here, this is the Motic code and we are inside the folder that we created that's called code. These are the files. Now we want to configure DDEV so it, uh, it starts and runs the server for us so we can interact with Motec, install it and do the test to do this all you have to write down is ddev config notice that we are inside the uh, code folder uh, it will ask you for uh, for configuration so for project name i'll just call it Motec. you can call it whatever you want uh, the directory root is exactly the directory we are at and then it says, I found a PHP project base. What type of project is this? We're just gonna uh, select PHP because Motic doesn't uh, fall into one of these types. So if you have WordPress, Drupal, Laravel, you can also run it on this system. And we will just choose PHP because this is Motic, a generic one. And now the configuration is done. If you can see, if we just create LS, you will see that we have a new folder called dot ddev okay now the first step has happened we can then create a, a, a call ddev start that will start motic for us it will take some time in the initial run but after that it will come uh, it will be faster it will not take time i will continue when the download is done after we started ddev start you can see that the ball is all complete the container is done and now you can see here at the bottom of the configuration the place where you can reach the installed motic so it's motic.ddev.site if i go now to chrome and open it uh, i will get an error but i will see uh, that is actually configured so now that we configured uh, ddev we want to do some uh, changes to the configuration so you have to go to nano dot ddev config dot yaml and here you can find the configuration uh, we are using php version 7.3 the web server we want to make it apache uh, pm and all the configuration can be found here in this link. So we can either use Nginx FPM or Apache FPM. So I'm going to use Apache FPM. Okay. Um, 
we also need to enable Xdebug. Xdebug will help us debug the code in a, a better way. A composer version, we need it one. We need to make sure that we are running on composer version one. And we also will inspire from the article written by Dennis here uh, to get other configuration. So uh, we need to enable extra packages, the IMAP package. And we need to add the time zone or whatever time zone you have. And as you can see, we are almost done. Then we click on Control O to save the changes. Then we make ddev restart. This will reflect the new changes. As you can see, we have three containers, one for the web, one for the database. Now it will rebuild. It would be a better choice if you just change the config file before you have ddev start. So it built only one. Now the restart is over. I can run multiple commands. So the first command I want to run is composer install. As you can see, I'm just using ddev composer install. That one install all the packages for Motic, the required packages for Motic. So this is the first step. It's like giving a command from outside for Composer to install stuff. When that step is done, uh, we will be able to install Motic from the browser and that would be the next step. Now Composer install just finished and now we have all the required packages installed and we can run Motic from the browser. So just go to your browser and go to motic.ddev.site. Let's do one just a little trick. So we have HTTPS and we are ready to go let's install it one thing you need to know is instead of using localhost you will just use db so the database name is db the database host is db the username is db and the password is db and we don't want to do any backups and you install motic as you do usually the installation now is over and as you can see i can access motic uh, like you usually do um, I want to highlight a couple of features that DDEV offers. So DDEV offers two tools. The first tool called MailHog, which allows you to collect all the emails sent out of this development environment into one main client and see them. And the other tool is my PHP My Admin, which is a database management tool. Uh, to see the configuration of your, uh, of your uh, server, just go to DDEV, then Describe. It will show you all the information. So I have uh, the database credentials. I have the information about the system, the server configuration. I have an access point for MailHog and an access point for PHP My Admin. Just open them in your browser and you can see them like this. Okay. As for the email configuration in the configuration uh, page, just go and select other SMTP host and make the host local host and the port 1025. And any email that is sent out from Motic will be collected here in the mail hog. So if I go and send test email, you will see this test email here and you can test the configuration and if things working for you, fine. Now the installation and configuration is done. Uh, let's find a bug in Motic and fix it together. Okay. Now that I installed Motic and everything is fine, you can see that I can enable the development mode just by adding index underscore dev.php and I will see the development toolbar of Symfony and you can see errors and uh, issues more explicitly and debug symbols and what kind of, of causes the error. I will also uh, refer to the contributor manual. Uh, so you can know how to navigate your way uh, while you are uh, creating a pull request. Of course, you need to start by signing uh, the Motic contributor agreement, and you can do this uh, from this link. And of course, you have to set up the environment. We have done that, and now we want to do a pull request. So the first thing you need to do in, in Opentu, you need to start ddev ssh. This will basically give you an access to the DDEV machine. Here you can run um, the cron jobs uh, directly. You can add the cron jobs. You can do any uh, command that you find, like composer install, etc. You can do any 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 of these commands here. So let's say I wanna 
fetch the latest update from the upstream, which is the original modic repo. Then I want to merge any changes that they have done in case there are changes into the staging branch because I am already in the staging branch. So let's get fetch, then get merged. So I have all the updates ready. Then I go back to their contributors manual. Here we are fixing, uh, doing a bug fix, so I'm allowed to merge into any of these. Uh, so I, I, for now, I will go with the staging. So I will create a new topic and will create that. So get checkout and the branch name. So I will have a branch for a bug that I uh, found that we will use for this demo. It's an actual bug, but we will use it for this demo. So we have a bug and we will use it here. So this is an issue number 9399. I will create a new topic. I will call it issue and then it's a self ref. Okay, so this is the branch name that I'm working with. Now I have a new branch. If I go to get branch, you will see that I have a new branch um, that got falls from the staging branch. For writing the code, I will use a tool called Visual Studio Code. I like this one very much because it, it integrates well with WSL and it has a lot of features um, that will help us. Once you open it, you can download it from the internet. Once you download, once you install it, you will see that you can install uh, an extension that allows you to connect to uh, WSL. I will install that uh, that extension. After the installation, just press on F1, then type down open WSL folder. Go to home, user, and then code and select this folder. You can see it says it's WSL open to, and now it will start importing your code. As you can see here, I have all the files that I need for Motic and now you can start your own magic. You can do the development, do whatever you like to do. And once you are done, we will continue with the steps. So I, right now I will implement the solution and we get back, we will push the solution and we show you how to make a full pull request. Now I fixed the bug that I found and I can start the debugging. So I can start an active debugging session. All I have to do is to run start debugging, then Chrome will open for me and I just go to the website. Uh, for example, I need a breakpoint at some at some place. You just add a breakpoint on the debugging window. You can just have a breakpoint. And whenever there's a bug or there's an issue or an exception, you will be able to see it here and you can find the values and debug it. So this is one cool thing to do with Visual Studio Code. Now that I fixed the bug, now it's time to push the code back to GitHub and create a BR. Now I'm done with the development. Now it's the time to push the code back to GitHub. So I just go to get status to see how many files I changed. So I changed only one file. I have to go back to uh, open to, so I pressed Control D to get out of ddev. Now we need to do one time configuration for the get variables. So I need to configure my user email and my username. And this can be done using the command get config minus minus global user dot email. And you fill in your email. This will be showing on GitHub. So this is the first command. And the other command is for user dot name and you fill in your name. After that, after you are done with this, you need to make a copy of a file called .gitconfig and you need to copy it inside code .ddev home additions. 
Once that file is copied, you need to uh, restart your DDEV, or you can do this uh, step before you start the uh, DDEV machine. Uh, so I, I copied that and, and I restarted my machine. Now I will go to DDEV SSH, run the command that says git config minus minus list. You would find that my email and, and the name has been copied here. And now I am ready to push my code. So I will go with the regular procedure, which is git add minus a, git commit minus m, fix a bug. And you can see that I can push it, git push origin. I always push to my origin, not to the upstream. And I want to create a new branch on GitHub push as you can see it used my key and now the push is ready if you see here I can create a pull request by using this link I will copy it and I will go to the browser and now I want to create a pull request I would say I want to merge with the staging branch and I would say this is the PR title. I will fill the PR information. I will add the information. It's not a new feature. It wouldn't create any depreciation. It will not do a BC break. It has an automated test because I did not change any of the issues inside it and it fixed the uh, issue number 9399. I can preview the link here. I will add the way to test it. I have the description here and I just add it to the way I can test this PR. It's steps to test PR. Here you go. Three, four, five, and this is a code. We can preview it just to make sure it looks nice. And you can see that I only have one file that got changed, and we are almost ready. So I'll just create a pull request. Now the pull request exists, and as you can see, the testing has started. Once the, tested, uh, the testing is done, other community members will review it, and hopefully you will make more contributions. Thank you for attending this session. I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. I know it has been a long with a lot of code and a lot of configuration, but once you get this set up and everything is done with you, you can add more, more BRs and you can contribute more to Motic. Looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Hi, Mohammed. Sorry, it seems like hey. we're having a few technical issues. No worries. No worries. Um, so that was a really great presentation. And DDEV sounds like a really great tool to get started with development. How did you um, get started with it in, first, in the first place? And how do you find working with Mortic in DDEV? Uh, well, um... I, I got like I got the first tip from an article that Dennis wrote and published on uh, on Motex website. Uh, I used similar tools in the past, like Home Seat for Laravel, which provided a virtualized environment uh, for development. And then when I dug deeper into DDEV, I found it's it's much way better than Home Seat and other competitors in the market in that field because it enabled a lot of features that. Um, would minimize the time for you to start developing. So it would take a little time to get started because you have to install so many software, especially on Windows. But if you are on Linux or Mac, uh, the process is much uh, smaller and much easier because you have most of the tool sets. Um, it allows you uh, to get all the versions of MySQL, BHP that you need. It gives you symbol certification uh, so you can get HTTPS immediately in, in your machine. It also has a mail server and a mail client facility, which, which makes your life 100 times easier. 
uh, it connects seamlessly with Negrox, so you can do external requests. So all of these together has made it made it of uh, an appealing tool for building and testing BHP applications and Motic in specific, because it supports the new features of Symfony and uh, similar uh, frameworks and the old features that we uh, sometimes have in Motic. Yeah, uh, you talked a bit in your session about people getting started in development with Mautic. What do you think are the biggest challenges people face and how have you been able to overcome them? Because you only recently started contributing, like probably six months ago, wasn't it, or something like that? Yeah, something like that. It wasn't that far away from today. Um, I, it, I, I think um, there's a steep learning curve in, in the beginning, like when you download Modic and you start developing for Modic, I think you get overwhelmed of, of the number of features that it has, uh, the amount of packages and code, like lines of code that you have to go through to understand what's going on there. Um, mm -hmm. And in order to overcome this challenge, I think it's, it's always a good idea to start looking into the issues section of GitHub uh, to see what kind of issues out there, what kind of small issues, usually they are tagged with T1 issues, like they are very small, you can understand what's going on there and you can solve the problems one one at a time, where you get an, mm -hmm. an overall understanding of how things work and how things are connected. And based on that, you can uh, contribute more and even build plugins and connect the dots um, and even like build core features within, within Motic. One nice thing um, about about the way Motic is programmed is that you can inspire a lot from what has been done into other frameworks. So, for example, mm -hmm. if you want to build a, a new email transport, like you want to connect with a new service like Mailgun, for example, all you have to do is to see what other frameworks has done. And because they are open source, you can inspire a little bit from there adopt it and put it back to Motic so it can work for you. So that's that's really amazing. That's really nice. And that would help you uh, to get development faster and get the features that you want in a faster pace. Yeah. You did some work recently on the Amazon SES plugin, I think. Could you talk a bit how you worked collaboratively with other people? Because I know that's also a challenge in open source, isn't it? Like sometimes you're having to work on things together. True, true. For SES, um, I think the feature has been tossed around since 2018, and uh, we've seen several PRs since then, but none of them actually made it to the final cut where we see it actually working and it, it, it sends uh, like a huge number of emails which, which SES supports. So um, I've seen a couple of contributors who are hopping around it. Uh, some, some people are fixing some small features like sending, some others for the webhooks. So through the Slack channel, I managed to connect with many of them. Like, I know that you have done this good work here. You have done this good work here. And what we did is we started collaborating over Slack and through GitHub. And uh, we worked on different branches for the, on uh, like from different forks. So for example, I worked with uh, Islam. He's from Egypt, another developer who, who worked with me on the SES um, plugin, the uh, transport. And we worked on his branch, on his fork of the repo. So we are collab like collaborating onto the, these lines of codes. And the, when we pushed, we pushed as a single PR. And that made things work faster. So the Slack channel is really a good, um, a good place to find developers and to talk to developers to build something together. And also, it's mm -hmm. uh, like GitHub is a, is a great starting place to find out which, uh, like which PRs. Uh, or which issues that people are most interested about and you can tackle them and you will find people to review and uh, review them and collaborate with you on them. That's really great. I think that's what the most important thing, isn't it? Knowing where you can find people to talk to about things and then how you take it yeah. forwards. So, um, yeah, that's great. So if you're not on Slack, you can get an invite at multi.org slash Slack and uh, hopefully we'll get lots more people joining as a result. Definitely, can I can see you in the event platform, Mohammed. Afterwards, will you be available in the networking area? Yes, yes, I am available um, probably for the next four hours or so. Okay, perfect. Well, that's okay. been really great. Thanks so much for your time. I'm so sorry Thank for you. the audio problems at the start. No worries, no worries at all. Thank you, Ruth, for all your help. All right, okay, okay. thanks very much.